Hello there and welcome once again to The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers, we're here every week meeting interesting people and dealing with topical issues. And we welcome in an old friend who's getting a new job this week. Yes, uh, Jeff Cloud, who <coughs> was uh, formerly on the Oklahoma Corporation Commission, elected for a full six-year term <coughs> on, a, excuse me, on a statewide basis, has uh, resigned and is going to take up some private business endeavors. He's going to come talk to us about that. A wealth of experience from Jeff Cloud's point of view, and he's now entering private business. We thought we'd catch him on this career transition. Jeff Cloud, today's guest on The Verdict. Hope you'll stay with us. It's time, America. Our energy future can be ours again with American natural gas. We have an abundant, affordable supply, unrivaled anywhere. One billion dollars a day for importing foreign oil isn't just a statistic, it's an opportunity. 30% lower greenhouse emissions isn't a pipe dream, it's a choice. Now is the time. Chesapeake, America's champion of natural gas. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma, working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers, and Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Today we're welcoming back to The Verdict uh, <clears throat> Jeff Cloud, making his second appearance with us, and we really do appreciate it. Uh, Jeff uh, did his undergraduate work at the University of Oklahoma, obtained his law degree from Oklahoma City University. He has been elected twice uh, to the Oklahoma Corporation Commission, uh, two statewide office terms and uh, he's been involved a while out at the commission in many industry and civic activities where he has uh, done really well and gotten high marks. He recently resigned from the, cor or is recently resigning uh, from the Corporation Commission, uh, almost on the day that we're taping this show, and he's gonna take up a new position with Continental Resources. He's been kind enough to come by and visit with us and tell us what's going on. Jeff, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Glad to have you back. Great to be here. <coughs> Quite a resume, my friend. Eight, almost nine years now in the Corporation Commission. It's hard to believe. My yeah. kids were little and now they're big. <laughs> Two statewide races. Two statewide races. Yeah, it's almost an out-of-body experience to think about that. But it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun to get around and meet people. And and uh, uh, we even my kids talk about the old camp, the first campaign as if it was a summer vacation. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> well, talk a little bit about uh, your career in, in, in public service because you work behind the scenes uh, for a variety of candidates. If you'll be a name dropper, drop in some of those successful candidates that uh, you worked for in campaigns and ultimately hired and then your sure. own election. Sure. Mayor, I've always been interested in politics and had a chance in 1986 is when I first start, I first got involved in Henry Bellman's first or second gubernatorial run. He first ran, of course, in 1962, but he was coming back in 1986 after two terms in the United States Senate, and I had a chance to be uh, uh, up, close and, up close to the senator and the governor since he had done both, and uh, I actually uh, was the driver for his, on his campaign. And did you have a wreck? We did not, but I got a couple of tickets, <laughs> and one of them, one of the, uh, I won't, it's been so long ago, I won't say who it was, but it was a highway trooper who said he'd uh, rip it up if he had a chance to meet Henry Bellman, so I would gladly open the door and uh, introduce the two. So I worked for him during that campaign, and then a couple of years in the governor's office in uh, his second term, and then went to work for Mickey Edwards for about four years. And that would and be in Washington? No, it was here. Oh, it, his office it, in Oklahoma right, City? Right, in, in his district office. And mm -hmm. then along the way got a law degree and um, was a, an attorney at the Corporation Commission, always been interested in the issues that we try to tackle there. And uh, while there, I met J.C. Watts and got back into politics or working in the now He was a commissioner then? He was a commissioner. He was a commissioner, that's correct. And uh, worked as a, an attorney for about a year and then with J.C. for about a year, 93 to 95. And then he got elected to Congress and went to work for him in his district office in Norman. 
and then uh, went to, was up there in Washington, traveled with him quite a bit, and then uh, worked for the mayor of Oklahoma City, Kirk Humphreys, mm -hmm. for about four years before I decided to jump off and go on this crazy venture in the Corporation <laughs> Commission. Huh. Well, it worked out well for you. It did. And uh, what did you learn along the way? Well, that's, uh, I learned um, at the commission, at least, well, I learned different things from all, all four of those gentlemen. Henry Bellman had this, uh, almost on TV, he, he, he seemed gruff, but when you met him, he, he is the definition of, if you ever looked up the word avuncular. Yeah. Well, he's means, very dry on television. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, you worked with him at Channel 5 I did. probably. Yeah, he did some uh, editorials. Commentary. Yeah. And he's gruff, but if you meet him, he's very avuncular. He's very uh -huh. uncle-like. And uh -huh. how are you doing? And, and he, we, and I was... Uh, uh, naive, I guess, at the time, and really wanting him to be a hard charger, and he's <laughs> like, just, you know, I have faith in people, and I learned that from him, that he, he loved Oklahoma, and he loved, uh, if people decided to work, go to work for the state, for instance, he, he was all, all, not skeptical at all of their attention, he was always supportive of people that worked in government, and uh, he's a, he was a truly great Oklahoman. Um, I can't say enough nice things about him. And Mickey was listed uh, whenever that Roll Call magazine did a poll of the, all the Congress, and they tried to list the top 10 people in intellect. And uh, of 535 members, Mickey was always in the top 10. Very smart man. Mm -hmm. and, and at Harvard today. He's now at Princeton, okay. and he's also doing some work at the Aspen Institute. And uh, so he's still very, very active. And I, I, we get into political discussions. He's not afraid to disagree with me, I can tell you that. <laughs> does he come back to Oklahoma? He much? does. I think he does. Yeah. He, you know, he comes back quite a bit, but he travels with, with the Aspen Institute and, uh, and then he you know, doing his work at Princeton. So he gets around still pretty well. And then, of course, with, the, with JC, uh, he's an amazing politician. I've been in many airports where I, I don't know where people come from, and they come up to him and I uh, want him to sign a football. I don't know how they knew he was there or he's the most... Uh, well, why they're carrying a football. <laughs> in an airport. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know get it, but they did. <laughs> I was there to watch it. And uh, he, he was, I think, the most um, uh, recognizable member of Congress, actually, even more than Newt Gingrich at the time. It may be hard for... And sometimes in Oklahoma, in Oklahoma we don't appreciate uh, how high he rose and how quickly he rose in the Republican ranks. and. Um, he, he's an electric political figure. And then working for Mayor Humphreys, I mean, I, that was a great experience too. We, he wanted to get some things done. He listed them on the first day and he got them done. I heard you came up with the idea of calling Maps for Kids, Maps for Kids. Is that, that a true I, he story? Gets, yes, I guess that's true. I guess that's true. <laughs> Um, but because there's he, been maps, but there was no, no no guarantee that the next one had to be called maps. There no, but be a it made stuff. it made sense to me, Mayor, that metropolitan area because we had to get 24 school districts mm -hmm. to agree. Metropolitan area public schools yeah. map, maps for and it worked. Somebody had to think of that. I mean, and, well, and, 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 and he gives me a lot of too much credit for <laughs> getting those folks together and, and agreeing on a formula to distribute the funds. Well, let's let's spend a moment on that because that was some level of political genius. And if if, if you all want to share credit, I'm I'm not into it dealing it out. I'm just telling you from where I sit, getting 24 school districts, getting a city council, getting a business community, and ultimately the citizens of this city and that district to all agree that this was a good idea. That was amazing. That, that's some amazing work. And I'll give that to him. He kind of laid out the, he, he was the quarterback and, and I may have been a center on that deal. I was just trying to do some good blocking for him, but also get the legislature to approve the idea that the the city could raise right. funds for a school district. That's right. Enabling legislation had to be in place to even do all that. Right. Those, yeah, right. you're, you're yeah. right. That's, that's another significant but, step. But uh, yeah, I got to give credit too to the 24 or five school districts we were working with. We tried to get Bethany. And that just didn't work because there weren't any Oklahoma. You know, Bethany's mm -hmm. school district does not go into Oklahoma City at all, right. so it, it didn't work for for Bethany. But everybody w really came to the table and figured out, you know, this is going to benefit all, all of us, even if we're going to give the majority of the funds to the Oklahoma City School District. You served uh, eight plus years on the Corporation Commission. How did that fulfill you professionally? I mean, I know your duties as a commissioner are very broad. Uh, and that may be, if I had to cite something, Kent, that would be it. I mean, it's multifaceted, and we have a public meeting and vote every day. So you better be on your game, and you better, it's a hearing. It could last 20 minutes, and it could last a couple of days. But we meet every morning at 930 commissioners walk into the courtroom and make a vote on the docket, on the oil and gas docket or the public utility docket or cotton gins or public or uh, underground storage tanks. It's just a varied list of eclectic uh, of duties that we have there. So I'd say that was the most fulfilling thing is that every day was, even though we did that every day, every day was a new day. Yeah. 
What did you draw on when you ran statewide? How much of uh, being Henry Bellman's driver and how much of working for those other elected officials did you draw on uh, to help yourself uh, get enough votes to win? That's a, that's a really good question, Mayor. I, it probably helped having J.C. Watts on my ads. I mean, that, <laughs> I drew on that. And, and that they all were uh, happily, and I, I, I'm uh, forever grateful that they wanted to be co-chairs of the campaign and, and having them lend their names to the campaign helped me uh, get introduced to the state and for in various parts, you know, Henry Bellman was very, very popular in especially rural Oklahoma mm -hmm. and, and J.C. was popular everywhere in, the, in Kirk, obviously in Oklahoma mm -hmm. City. and uh, So I drew on that quite a bit. Let me ask a question that I'm guessing someone out there in the audience is wondering. What does a corporation commission deal with? What, what, is, what is that? Okay. Well, oil and gas is a is, takes up the majority of the docket every day. And basically what we do is tell people where they can drill. They make application to us, and then there are all kinds of things that go on in oil and gas. But they also, uh, we, we designate an operator for a well, and if uh, enforced pooling actions are uh, designed to stimulate uh, that type of activity, people out there drilling, we look at it as uh, we want to develop Oklahoma's resource, protect the environment, but develop our resources here. Because it, it's been a great, as you all know, uh, oil and gas has been fabulous for our state. But th that's pretty much oil and gas. Public utilities, we regulate electricity and natural gas. OG&E and ONG, for instance, have rate cases. OG&E's got one coming up in December. And uh, that takes up a little bit of time. Telephone, we still have some uh, regulatory authority uh, over tele telecommunications and that we set tariffs. But uh, not, we don't have rate cases for them. But we do cotton gins. We're the only state in the union that regulates cotton gins. And if you go look at the, when you go fill up, you'll see a corporation commission uh, fi uh, st sticker affixed to the pump. And that, we're just, we've got people going out there randomly checking to make sure that the tanks aren't polluting, but also that you're getting what you pay for. Mm -hmm. All kinds of stuff. Transportation, we certify, and, and yeah. weigh trucks. When you say cotton gin, I know the cotton co-op in downtown Oklahoma City. Yeah. Well, so are there are many like that or well, different mostly, from that? Mostly in Jackson County. It's a it's, uh, old tr traditional gin, that they, and they, they like it the way it is. And cotton production in this state's gone way down. Mm -hmm. Used to, I think you could draw basically an I-40 line across Oklahoma, everything south where cotton farmers and north basically were wheat, but now all the wheat, I mean all the cotton uh, production is southwest down near Altus. Mm -hmm. Let's take a break. Okay. Jeff Cloud's our guest. We have one more segment with Jeff. I hope you'll stay with us. You're watching The Verdict. The thing that has made the most sense for me is realizing that I am still an educator, and that is what I do at the Chickasaw Nation. I'm Dr. Amanda Cobb-Greetham, I'm a historian, and I'm Chickasaw. The Chickasaw Cultural Center is amazing. It is a very, very special place devoted to the sharing and to the celebration of Chickasaw history and culture. State-of-the-art technology, exhibits that are not like anything I've ever seen. The Spirit Forest is incredible and you feel as if you have actually just walked into a forest with huge trees all around you. It's timeless and yet it's sort of also representative of our time depth to really just sort of reach through time and touch the past. By the end of the exhibits, you really have a sense of Chickasaw cultural and political resurgence and the extent to which we are a healthy, dynamic, and vital tribe today. Chickasaws have always been an inclusive people. This is something for the whole community and for the state of Oklahoma. In 25 years, world energy demand will grow by 44% with oil and natural gas largely meeting the need. The question is, will America's demand be met by American resources? Oklahoma says yes. We're developing the largest oil and natural gas discoveries America has seen in 40 years. It's creating jobs and millions in tax revenue for schools, roads, and hospitals. Oklahoma's oil and natural gas industry, advancing our state, empowering our nation. When you have something important to communicate, it becomes clear that there's a lot of competition for your audience's attention. So how can your message stand out and actually resonate with your audience? Legal Graphics has the answers. The team at Legal Graphics will work with you to plan, design, and even test your presentation to ensure your message will be heard and remembered. Call Legal Graphics today to schedule an appointment. The readiness is all.
welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers, and we're visiting with Jeff Cloud. Jeff, uh, you just recently resigned off into private business. What prompted your decision and why now? Kent, that's a great question. I'm, I'm not sure it, 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 that I was looking to make a, a jump, but I started actually just to get right to it. I've got a kiddo that's in, at, at OU, and tuition bills are mounting, and kids are coming up, and I felt like I'd done what I needed to do at the commission, and it's so it just seemed right that it's time to look out for the best interests of my family, and not that it, being at the commission didn't, but it just something to, mm -hmm. and, and it, it gives me a chance, too, to try to do something differently um, that I want to um, see if I can do. What will your role be there? I'm going to be vice president of natural gas, and mainly it's going to well, be Well, we haven't designated continental resources, I don't think. No. Yeah, it's going to be at Continental Resources. Yeah. I'm at Continental Resources, and they, uh, within the past year or so, announced they're, they're moving their headquarters from Enid to Oklahoma City, and they've been very, very active in oil up in the Bakken Shale in North Dakota and in Montana, and uh, had a conversation with them, and they're very bullish about natural gas and its development, especially here in the mid-continent region. And moving to Oklahoma City, it sounded like a pretty exciting opportunity. Yeah, we've had Harold Hamm on a couple oh, of times. Oh, great. Yeah. He's right. been quite good in explaining what Continental is And what a, what a great uh, story your, your, he is. Your job there will be? Uh, natural gas marketing, primarily. Trying to get the natural gas uh, uh, to market and get it sold. Mm -hmm. Talk about that, that, that region in North Dakota. It's, it may be the hottest region uh, for exploration. It, right it, it's, it's been amazing. And uh, we have been blessed, as I said before, with uh, an abundance of natural resources, which has helped our state since, it, since our inception. Uh, but you look at... Uh, the map across the United States of budgets that are balanced and North Dakota is uh, only one pretty much is running at a surplus. <laughs> I think Alaska, yeah. probably Montana too, but largely it's due to that Bakken shale that, uh, that Harold Hamm and Continental Resources have been the primary force behind. So you won't be in the legal department as such? No, I think they'll be doing some legal work. Yeah. So get a little bit of that. Um, I think it's going to be a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and they're talking about doubling and, or maybe even tripling the size of the the company, so uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of work to do. What are the challenges uh, going forward for CR and 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 your role? Where do you, where do you see this uh, this job taking you? Well, um, the challenges. I, I don't know if it's for me personally, but I would say for the natural gas industry is um, the price of it is uh, mm -hmm. is still pretty uh, undervalued. I think at you know in the high threes, and when you think about it, in 2000. Seven it, up into eleven and twelve. So, it, it, and obviously our state, we we try to budget on numbers. And if the price of natural gas is way low, the state's right. coffers are. What low. is it? Is it just oversupply that is accounting for the real disparity between the price of oh, oil I and the price so, of natural Kent. gas? Oh, I think so, Kent. Supply demand. Michael J. Economides wrote *The Color of Oil*, and I heard him speak in April of two thousand eight wait, 2009, and he was talking about um, the natural gas prices are always going to be low. And then I heard him speak this year, April 2011, and it, the reason he said it was going to be low at that time, he said, because we're going to be importing so much natural gas. Well, here he is two years later talking about it being because of the discovery, primarily of Oklahoma-led companies, of the shale plays and natural gas. So I'd say it's oversupply and the worldwide economy being so bad mm -hmm. that Demand, demand went down. And well, we get to a point, though, where we recognize having a domestic fuel source is so valuable and we can use natural gas to wean ourselves off the foreign energy. Uh, it's, it's, it's a really great fuel. It's clean and it's uh, abundant and it's continental. It's in the United States and, and Canada. And, and uh, now they're reversing those LNG ports that they were talking about bringing in the natural gas into Houston or wherever. Now we're talking about shipping it out to other countries that might need it. I was going to ask you about export possibilities. I think <clears throat> if one way to uh, reduce the supply so the price can go up is to sell it somewhere else. Right. I had a chance to go to China and, uh, and India. I've heard a lot about China and India and the worldwide demand they'll be growing up and I mean going up. And in China, it's the real deal. I don't know if you all have had a chance to go over there, but they are competitive. They want to be number one in every category. And uh, I remember George H.W. Bush, when he got appointed the first envoy to China mm -hmm. in 1974, I think it was in Time Magazine, a picture of him uh, in a sea of bicycles. And when I was there, I think I saw three, really? mostly motorized. So, so they're going to be consuming the energy, whatever they can get, and natural gas, I hope, would be one of them. Mm -hmm. 
Will your office be in Enid or will it be in Oklahoma, Oklahoma City? Oklahoma City, yeah. Temporarily in the Oklahoma Tower and then moving over to the Devon Tower once uh, they make their move into their new building. And what, what's the time frame of Continental Resources moving the bulk of its uh, corporate headquarters? That, um, I'm, I'm thinking, uh, I don't know for sure, but I think April, May, but I think the Devon building looks like it's, uh, they're gonna stage that, I understand, and move some people in as they're finishing the top of the building, so it could be sooner than that. Yeah, and we, I guess we probably should set that up. Uh, Devon uh, is uh, leaving a lot of empty vacancies in, in the office space, and, and it's a, it assumed Continental Resources is gonna be taking up most, if not all, of the main building. Uh -huh. um, and uh, and perhaps some other sets of that's other right, areas that's as right, well. That's right. Um, and Especially if they decide, I mean, that they're going to keep expanding their company. Yeah, and and you mentioned that CR does have growth plans. They they're aggressively seeking those uh, mm -hmm. those goals. From your life in the oil and gas business and in politics, where do you see um, the industry in Oklahoma five years from now, ten years from now? Will it be as big a part of our economy? Will it be smaller? What what do you what's your? I prediction? think it'll be as big. If you'd have said. Um, to me, Mayor, 13, 14 years ago, when I went to go work for the city of Oklahoma City, uh, which was, again, an outstanding opportunity for me, uh, that we would be the headquarters for four large energy companies. I mean, Devon was growing, of course, but four of them, four of the large, the leaders, and we're talking about shale plays, and we're talking about all kinds of new technology that they have brought to the fore. Um, it's amazing what Oklahoma City, where Oklahoma City's positioned. So I'm, I'm very bullish on the energy business, and I think it's good for Oklahoma, long term. <coughs> Mr. Ham's always been quite charitable in his activities with the Diabetes Foundation right. and the like. Uh, do you see uh, Continental uh, bringing to Oklahoma City some of that same mindset about trying to help the city progress? Oh, I do. Progress? I do. I think they want to. I think that's one of the reasons they want to be here. They want to be here because other companies are here, and there's. There's some synergy around those energy companies, but I think they intend to, uh, they're Okies and they want to help out Oklahomans. Well, my uh, <coughs> personal note, my uh, law office is in the Devon Tower. Right. So I'll soon be your neighbor. Oh, great. And, well, and welcome to the building. By thank the you. Way. Thank you. How's the coffee? Uh, uh, <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Just terrible. <laughs> hey, let's let's switch topics. I know you're a big, big uh, sportsman. Have you seen Moneyball yet? I haven't. The movie? No, but I, I'd like to see that. I, I, Shawnee native Brad Pitt, huh? Is Billy Bean? Is that right? <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. What's your perspective on on uh, baseball in, in, in the major league level right now? Well, um, I'm about the only. No, I shouldn't say that. But I still love it as much as I did when I was a kid. Well, I mean, the grandstands are full. They they are. That just the TV is. You know, people don't watch it. Uh, they've got yeah. so many choices. But of course, look at college football. When I right. I thought New Year's Day was a big deal when we had four games, and now every Saturday there are 18 of them. Well, I, I tell you, you, you watch old highlights though. I'm, I'm, you, every time you watch Roger Maris hit home run number 61. There's not a whole lot of people sitting out in right field at, at Yankee uh, Stadium, no. and, and you see Don Mattingly in, you can in see the mid '80s. The ball bounce around. A little yeah, bit. <laughs> and and the last day of the regular season this year is about the most exciting baseball ever. Yeah. When we had all these races and it's coming down and games are going to the extra extra innings to decide who gets the wild card, it's very very exciting. So yeah, people complain about rising tickets, but people are buying those tickets. They up. seem and, to do it. And, and they seem to do it. You're right. So it, the, the sport does seem healthy. And it's but good, it, it does. But you, as you led us in, in in Oklahoma City, I remember the old days when they didn't think that Oklahoma City could be a host of a major league franchise of any kind. Right. And the, look at that. Yeah, it's uh, it, it can change places. It can. Jeff, good luck in your next venture. Thank you, we'll Mayor. have you back great, on the break to great, talk about it. Great being with you. Thank All you, right. Jeff. Thank you, Kent. Kent and I'll have a final word when we get back. The good life comes naturally to Tulsa where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. 
All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political government and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. We are wrapping up a show with uh, former Corporation Commissioner Jeff Cloud. We've caught him kind of at a transitional point in his professional career as he joins Continental Resources. What a, what a uh, collection of life experiences Jeff's had. Yes, we followed uh, Jeff kind of indirectly, not necessarily as a guest on the show, <coughs> pardon me, for uh, a number of years. He's excelled in everything he's ever tried. I know he'll be a success with the Continental. He is being replaced by Patrice Douglas, the former mayor of Edmond and that Corporation Commissioner seat. And uh, if you want more information about the Corporation Commission, you can get it at their website. Let me pass along that address for you. It is www.occ.state.ok.us. That's occ.state.ok.us. We also have a website, and we invite you to go there and tell us about a guest or a subject matter you'd like to see discussed on a future episode of The Verdict. Our website is theverdict.tv. That's theverdict.tv. And we look at it. Yes, absolutely. We'd love to hear it. from you. We've heard from all four of you. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We'll see you next time on The Verdict. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.